Welcome back to Citizen Extra. Many thanks indeed for staying tuned with us here today, this Wednesday, the seventh day of March 2018. We immediately want to take you now to Kuala County, where the county assembly is discussing a ban on Mira, um, also Mugoka. Um, let's listen in, or let's rather have that discussion with Nikki Gitonga. Well, uh, thank you, Waiga. As you have just said today, the County Assembly of Kuala uh, is discussing a motion to outlaw Mira and Mugoka uh, chewing here in Kuala due to a number of factors, according to the motion mover, uh, Honorable Anton Yama, who is an MCA from Kasemeni. Uh, most of the youth here have been affected, uh, affecting the education standard here in the county, and also when it comes to other family matters. We're also aware in the recent past, during the KDF recruitment, most of the youth uh, here in Kuala were thrown out due to underweight and it's alleged that it's, uh, it's due to the mirror chewing. So maybe you can just get um, a view from the uh, motion mover is going to tell us more uh, concerning the motion and why he decided uh, to bring such a motion at this uh, specific time. Uh, maybe Mr. Anton Yama can you tell us why, why that motion now? Uh, thank you so very much Nikki and to Citizen Studio. Uh, I think of essence uh, I am a parent and I, I've seen uh, the menace that has been created by uh, the consumption of uh, Mogoka. Uh, that hub is disastrous to the youth of this county. Uh, and particularly in my ward, uh, it is worse. Uh, you, you see, you see uh, every youth uh, from the ages of 12 years up to 25 have really been affected uh, 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 because they consume uh, that social hub called uh, Muguka. And uh, it has so many side effects. Uh, one, one, of, one of the side effects is that uh, uh, our youth are not active anymore in two nation building. They cannot contribute to the economy of this country simply because they spend all the hours from morning to evening and uh, throughout the night consuming uh, Muguka. They can't work, they can't look for employment, they can't look for jobs. Uh, what they do is, provided they get 50 shillings, they will go directly into buying that, uh, that, that hub. And they spend all the, 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 all the day chewing uh, that, that hub, which lowers their concentration, lowers their sexual power. Our women are crying. Uh, in future, in our ECD centers and in primary schools, we may not even we not we not even have kids because our, our, our those who are, those who are in in marriage, they can't even perform their uh, their, 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 their conjugal duty as husbands because so, all the so what are what are those uh, noticeable uh, effects that uh, are seen in our youth in Kuala? Where where are the specific areas where maybe you can tell this area and this area uh, the youth have been affected by mirror chewing? One one of the biggest thing is uh, our youth are getting out of school. Uh, they're not going to school anymore because they keep on chewing this hub from morning to evening, both in primary, both in secondary, and this one was attested through, uh, when, when the, the KCSE results were out. Uh, most of our youth, they, they scored E's, they scored, scored D, so you realize... So you realize it cannot work. We can't have our, our youth in schools anymore. Then marriages, we have a lot of uh, divorce cases. Our women are complaining. Our men are never at home. They never, they never do their duty. This can be seen maybe killing Mira business. You know, Meru County depends on it uh, as its economy activity. Are you trying to kill uh, the Mira business for, for the Meru? I am not saying I'm killing the Mira business. But if you look at the larger picture, our youth are, are, are dying. Our economy is dying. So if they can look for other markets elsewhere, but in Guadalajara County, I think we're going to be safe if we prohibit transportation, selling, and consumption of Muguka. So after passing uh, the bill, maybe if uh, you're going to get, you're going to be supported by your members of uh, County Assembly, what, uh, what will happen thereafter? Because we've seen so many motions being passed and nothing else happen. Are you going to carry out a crackdown or what will, what will be the process after? What will happen is after, if this motion uh, passes today and adopted by the whole house, what will happen is the Department of Health will now bring uh, a bill to the house. Uh, once that bill is approved into law, then it will, it, it will be binding, it will take effect. So uh, if you co you're caught consuming or selling, then you'll, you'll face the full force of the law. Thank you. 
Uh, that's, uh, th those are views from uh, Honorable Anton Yama, who is the motion mover uh, of what laying uh, Mira and Moboka chewing. So just hoping uh, any time from now, uh, the county speaker, Samirua, is expected to be in the chambers to preside on uh, about the motion. So maybe we can just come later to see how the discussion will unfold. Back to you in studio, uh, Waiga. Well, very worrying uh, report there. Niki Gitonga, thank you for the update. Let's wait and hear what the county assembly will decide. And from Kwale County, we bring you back to Nairobi County and take you to the University of Nairobi. This is day three now of the Nairobi Innovation Week, which actually began on Monday. And this is a platform for discovering and showcasing the new and most promising, most promising startups in the region. Let's now bring in Dennis Otieno, I believe, for... Okay, let's... Oh, sorry, rather, let's listen in uh, as ICTCS Joe Musheru... Uh, towards uh, uh, the location, uh, probably being briefed on some of the startups and innovations that are being featured at this uh, particular uh, location during the Nairobi Innovation Week. Let's listen in. The, that drone management uh, system, yes. system or monitoring hmm. system, is right. it already being used by KCA? It's not being used, but they are, they're ready to use it. We are just finishing it. What's we, pending? No, the the What's issue pending we had, now? we had, he, was, he created it and we've not had access to other developers. So it's, he's been a one-man team. We need actually, you know what the NASA is doing, they have a group of 100 people working on this. What we're asking for is something similar. We need the manpower, you know, with that expertise to, to, to do something at this level. Have you identified the people you need? We've, we've identified several companies that can that are willing to help. Companies or people? People and companies. Yeah, so, yes, but have you identified the people? Yes. Yes. Okay, where are they? Yeah. They're in Kenya or outside? actually coming to the office. He was supposed to come here to, to come and talk to us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. So let, let's get uh, together then. Let's get together. Definitely. Too. Next year we should be flying these things oh, around here. We're ready. Yeah, yeah, we're ready. Okay. Yes. Right. Thanks a lot. Very good. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do you have a dinner? Alan Monzia. Alan Monzia. Yes. This is Jeffrey. Okay. Jeffrey Nyaga. Okay. Sandy Sana. So you working with the what does it call this again? Uh, Oh, zip line. Yeah, oh, zip line. I've got a better product for you for that. So, well. But are you working with them? No, no, we, 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 they, they have actually refused to work with us. And uh, you know, it's no, you know, yeah, we're, we're, we're a Kenyan company. Right. We have a solution for healthcare. It's a drone that can carry two kilos with return cargo. If you've got blood samples that need to be tested from rural Kenya, that need to come to a main hospital for testing, we can do the reverse logistics with our drone. It's actually a drone being used in Madagascar, Kenya, Cameroon, and other countries. But again, how much time do you need for, for us to go through this? We're ready to go through. We just how much time do you need it. from me for us to a day? A day will give you whatever you. You can't do. have a day. I mean, <laughs> an hour, an hour of it. A, a day is impossible. Yeah. So whatever time you give us, we'll be prepared. Uh, prepared to give you what you're asking. Okay. 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 So let's say an hour. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. But come with all the. We have it. Okay. So not. Yes. Congratulations. Thank guys. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. 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 Yeah. All right, that's a little bit about what's happening at uh, the Nairobi Innovation Week, currently being hosted at the University of Nairobi. Um, at 11 o'clock, we'll have more uh, uh, in-depth coverage of the events there, and our correspondents there, Denis Otieno, Patrick Igunza, will take you through some of the startups, some of the business ideas there, and the activities happening there as well. Well, these are some of the big stories making headlines this morning. Environment CS Kiriako Tobiko is set to launch a tree planting exercise as the government starts its ambitious plan to increase forest cover. He'll be at the Gong Forest near the Bomas of Kenya. CS Tobiko will launch the planting of trees after the government imposed a 90-day logging ban and days after the launch of a 10-member task force that will review forestry management across the country. Tobiko will lead the task force in planting 1,000 trees as part of commencement of their mandate. According to Deputy President William Ruto, Kenya has 3 million acres of land on which trees should be planted. The task force has a very clear mandate that we have close to 120,000 of plantation forests that have no trees. We have almost a similar amount of indigenous forests that have no trees. We have another almost 3 million 
acres of land that need to be planted with the trees. And the task force has the duty now to tell us and recommend to government one alternative sources of mobilizing resources for the purposes of ensuring that all these degraded areas are restored at least the almost half a million acres of unplanted forest area is planted and what alternative sources of funding using international best practice Now at least 3,000 litres of illicit brew were destroyed yesterday in Nakuru as the government intensifies its crackdown on illicit brew. Nakuru West Deputy County Commissioner Elmi Shafi led police officers in destroying the brew following the directive issued by Interior Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi. He warned police officers against complicity in the war against illicit brew and that action will be taken for abetting the trade. Shafi accused some officers of tipping off illicit brew sellers during operations. Ronda and Kaptembwa slums have been flagged as the most notorious locations. Big challenges we have uh, part of the security officers who are involved in in the concealing of the sale of the uh, illicit uh, uh, spirits, who they are conniving and, uh, and uh, colluding with with uh, with, uh, with, those, with those dealers who are importing from outside. And we shall we shall deal with you anytime we identify those individuals involved. President Uhuru Kenyatta yesterday met governors and discussed the implementation of the university health care program for all, a key plank of his priorities in his second and final term. The execution agenda includes a pilot program for 100% access to universal health care in four counties in a program supported by the national government. The president, governors, and Kenya's international partners agree that there is sufficient money in the economy to implement universal health care for all within the next five years. Now, universal health care for all, plus building half a million new homes, providing food security and nutrition, and significantly increasing the contribution of manufacturing in the economy, are the president's areas of focus in his second term, which started in November last year. Eleven governors attended this meeting at State House yesterday, including the chair of the Health Committee at the Council of Governors, Mohamed Kutio Visiolo, and the council's vice chairperson, Governor Ann Waigoro of Kirinyaga. Now, dairy cooperatives in Kajado have been shut down because of a shortage of milk in the entire region. The ongoing drought in the region has left the women who are the patrons, uh, it has forced them rather, to shut down these dairies. And this, of course, has led to many job losses. According to the chair lady Agnes Benet, the cooperatives uh, began their shutdown in 2015 due to drought. She says they've been collecting over 30 million shillings a month in the seven main milk outlets in Kajado Central. Since 2015, Masiwa Ikapunguka. After last year, 2017, to the two three months. Pekayake to Kapunga. Kwa jile ya climate change. Huwa tunatarajia peak season kwanzia mwuzu wa tatu. Mwuzu wa tatu ine tano paka mwuzu wa sita. Mwuzu wa saba masiwa inaansa kupongoka. Hakuna na muna sasa tinakatu mbaka mungu wakujie akumbuke watu yake. Mba, ngomba utupate ngombe tena. Ndiyo ngomba asaye. Ndiyo utupate tena masiwa. Kasabu sahi hakuna na muna sahi. 
All right, let's now bring in our correspondent, uh, Colin Sitiabai in West Pokot. He's talking to Richard Ayabe the, uh, from the Agricultural Development Corporation. The topic being food security. Where are we? A part of the country you know, where Kenyans really rely on that part of the country in terms of food security. Sitiabai, what can you tell us? Uh, well, Waiga, I'm not in West Pokot County. I'm in Transoya in Endebes constituency, whereby um, agriculture CS uh, Mwangi Kiunjuri is expected to be here. But uh, the bigger picture here, we are speaking about food security in the country. Uh, during last year, we, ca we witnessed by that uh, the country had a food shortage and uh, the country was forced to uh, import food from outside the country. But uh, today I'm glad to speak to Agricultural Development Corporation, MD, who will be telling us uh, what plans are, are in place to make sure that uh, this year the country does not fall sh food shortage. Uh, Mr. Ayabe, maybe you can tell us uh, what are uh, your plans to make sure that uh, this year we have enough food in the country. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Richard Ayabe, uh, the Managing Director of ADC, Agricultural Development Corporation. Well, as you are aware, last year we had a challenge on uh, food and uh, the government has take it, uh, taken it very seriously and has put it among the big four agenda. And under the big four agenda, we have the food and nutrition security. And ADC plays a critical role in the, 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 the food security and nutrition. This is because uh, ADC, we specialize in growing of seed maize. And you know, growing of seed maize is, uh, is, is, a, is a duty that uh, we take it uh, wholeheartedly. And uh, we are also producing commercial maize. Uh, as you are aware, uh, we are in the, under the Ministry of Agriculture and Irrigation. And uh, today, we are here even in the bull station uh, waiting for uh, our minister, uh, Honorable Mwangi Kunjuri. He will be coming here. And this is because of the... This is because ADC it, it, it really plays that key role. Uh, we, we have taken the task uh, and we, are in, we have increased, we have doubled our production under maize this year. Last year we did about uh, around six, 7,000. This year we are roaring and we are get, going to about uh, 13, over 13,000 acres of, of, uh, of maize. That doubling is, is, is the fact that uh, we are embracing what the government wants us to do. Uh, we know when you have produced uh, enough maize, there will be uh, ugali on the table. And uh, having ugali on the table, you know ugali, you have to eat with something. Majority of our people and many Kenyans uh, take ugali with uh, maybe meat and also um, milk. And that is why we are in the bull station. In the bull station, uh, this is the second bull station in this country. And uh, it is a modern one. Uh, behind me, you will be able to see the structures where we are having the cement collection going on. We have the lab, uh, we have the cement, I mean the bulls uh, in zero grazing unit, which is a modern technology. Uh, the minister will be coming here to appreciate what, what we have done. And uh, the importance of it is that uh, we want to produce more milk. In order to produce more milk, you need to, to use AI. Uh, to use AI, you have to have bulls that produce cement that we package here and we will be able to um, to sell to the farmers at affordable prices. We are going to phase two in this uh, project where we want to introduce sex cement. We will be the first to produce sex cement in this country. This is because the demand for sex cement is very high and uh, it is expensive. We want to bring down that cost by introducing sex cement lab and we will be able to make the farmers choose the sex of the aphas, or I mean the sex of the offspring they are going to get, especially the, the, the females. So I think basically we are here to say food security is with us and we have embraced it, we have doubled our area and we would see a very big difference come the end of the year. Uh, maybe to tell you, Waiga, this year, according to agricultural expert, we expect uh, more than uh, 7 million bags of maize to be produced here in Tanzania, considering the fact uh, annually Tanzania produces about 6 million bags of maize, and uh, the maize can sustain the country of about uh, 3 to 4 months annually. From Tanzania County, I don't have much to say. Back to you, Waiga Maura.
Thank you so much, Colin Shitiabai, for that update from Transoya. Let's now take it to Nakuru, where Evans Asiba is on standby to give us an update regarding KDF recruitment, which is coming to a close in the next couple of days. Evans, kindly give us the latest update in regards to that particular activity by the Kenya Defense Forces. Evans, if you can hear me, kindly go ahead and give us that update regarding KDF recruitment. Lodric. Okay, we seem to have a problem communicating with Evans Asiba. Let's uh, try and see if we can get him once more. He had an update for us regarding KDF recruitment started last month. Uh, we know there are a lot of challenges and a lot of questions that members of the public were asking about this recruitment. How is it being done? Why do you consider certain factors like someone's teeth, whether, you know, if all of them are there or not, or marks on their body parts, ETC, and we, ha we did have some experts here actually discussing uh, some of the reasons why uh, KDF operates in this particular manner in its recruitment, but uh, nevertheless, that is the situation as of now. We uh, seem to have a challenge getting our correspondent. We'll take you back to Nakuru when we're able to do this. But for now, let's give you updates from other parts of the world. We start in South Africa. Now, as South Africa grapples with the world's worst listeria outbreak, it is the small stores in South Africa which are taking a financial hit as customers fear for their lives. Now, South African Health Minister Aaron Motswaledi said the source of this disease, which has killed 180 people since December last year, was found after preschool children fell ill after eating poloni products. Kenya has joined other African nations in the ban against the import of South African meat following a deadly listeria outbreak linked to factories in the country. In a statement signed by the Director of Public Health, Kefa Ombacho, he said, and I quote, references made to the outbreak of listeriosis in South Africa associated with products from Enterprise Food Production Factory and Rainbow Chicken Limited. The products from Enterprise include Boki, Renon, Lifestyle, and Merely Keep, while those from Rainbow Products are Polonyi, Russian, and the Viennas. The ban by the Kenya Public Health Department follows similar bans imposed by other African nations such as Namibia, Malawi, Mozambique, and Zambia. Now, ahead of a five-nation trip to Africa, U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson yesterday decreed China's growing influence on the continent, which he asserted